Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to begin talking about ways that you can prove things. The entire buildup of our propositional logic, set theory, and now predicate logic has all been building towards this. We want to be able to prove statements in a way that is mathematically consistent, and that way we can decide what is true unambiguously, the entire goal of mathematics. So we're going to have various different ways we can do proofs. In this video, we're just going to talk about what types of proofs exist. And then we'll see many, many examples of proving things using these methods of proof. So our first type, our first type of proof is going to be modus ponens. This is sometimes called an inductive argument. It is a very, very, very obvious argument. You have that P implies Q. You know that P is true. So you can therefore conclude that Q is true. This should hopefully make perfect sense. You know that every time P is true, Q is true. I then tell you P is true, so therefore necessarily Q must be true. Again, hopefully very straightforward. Our next type is proof by contrapositive or modus tollens. This is, I again tell you that P implies Q, but then you discover that not Q is true. And by contrapositive, we know that P implies Q is exactly the same as not Q implies not P. Therefore, if we know not Q, we know that not P must also be true. So this is the exact same thing as above, but we're adding in the fact that we know that an implication is always the same as the contrapositive of that implication. Our next type of proof is probably my favorite name for almost anything in mathematics, which is reductio ad absurdum, which effectively means reduction to the absurd. In practice, people call this proof by contradiction, but the idea is that you start by supposing that something is false, you then show that that leads to a contradiction. In symbols, I've wrote, written it here, no one really writes it in these symbols. You, given a statement, you say, let me suppose that it is false. You then show that that leads to something absolutely absurd. If this thing is false, then the thing in the corner there is a cat and also not a cat. If this thing is true, then five is equal to four. Our final type of proof is actually not a proof, but it's a way of disproving something. And again, no one usually writes this down in symbols, but I've done that here in case someone cares to see it symbolized. It's the idea of a counterexample. Everyone is aware of this idea just from talking in English. I give you a statement that's supposed to be true for every single possible instance. Every single time I tell you that P of X implies Q of X. If you can find something that proves that wrong, one instance in which it's wrong, then you have proven the original statement wrong. It's a way of disproving a generalization. We'll see several examples of this as we go through our future videos. But for now, you're trying to disprove a universal statement by finding one instance in which it is false. This is not a method of direct proof, but a way of proving that something is false.